Hey Hebrew fans, this is Todd. So today I'm thinking about making a new um, Ice Armor He-Man for Classic. So this, and just, uh, just to let you guys know, this is a special episode for my friend Brian, because he's in the middle of making his own um, Ice Armor He-Man, so I thought I'd make one to, to kind of show some techniques and some ways to do it. So first of all, this is one of my coolest figures I think they made for the 2000X line for He-Man. I mean, it's so cool, the grays and the blues, and it's just awesome. Now he came with this little piece that goes on his wrist and it's supposed to fling these little ice discs and the way you put this on is you would take and put it in there and just kind of move it around until you find where it seats perfectly and once you get it to seat perfectly then you would, uh, there it is, burp, it just popped into place, then you would take and put the straps on around. If you take a look it has basically the, the indents of his wrist cuff so it lines up and just pops into place once it's lined up perfectly now he didn't come with a battle axe or any other weapons even though the back of his armor is a perfect spot to store his battle axe but in so cool we came with a blue clear ice battle axe um even his spear is such an odd size with this big old handle in the middle his hand has to be a special hand to hold it and it just does not fit right in his back because it needs to go down to about right here and you can't put it in this way because the spearhead doesn't fit. So you know it's made for the battle axe. It just fits too perfectly in there. He just didn't come with one. All right, so to make this figure, it takes quite a lot of other figures to recreate them. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first figure you're going to need is uh, Ice Armor He-Man. Because we're going to take his armor and some other parts. Now, there's a couple ways to do the different wrist guards, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So, next you got to figure out what body you're going to use. Now, before I jump into the body, you may also want to grab another He-Man, just so you can have the battle axe and maybe the shield as well to go with your Ice Armor He-Man. So, it stinks as you got to get another figure just for the accessories to go with it. Alright, so, next thing is the head. So the head, we only have one 2000X He-Man head that we got, and that was in the Snake Armor um, Battle Armor King Hiss combo pack, and that is the coveted 2000X He-Man head that uh, you end up, if you start making a lot of 2000X customs, you end up with a lot of these heads. Now what's cool is that wrist guard right there is very similar to the 2000X He-Man, so you could actually use that and there's another figure that has another wrist guard on the other side, but it's not the right color. But if you were to cast them, you could create those. This also comes with a really cool 2000X sword. If you're arguing to use a 2000X sword, I suggest using the one from this pack instead of the one that came with the 2000X He-Man. It's just a better quality sword. It doesn't have the cool spin feature, though, like we saw with the 2000X sword, where it opens up to pull the power of Grayskull in, but it's still a very cool sword. All right, so next, the body. Which body do you want to use? Now, originally, I used to always use King Grayskull for this. King Grayskull is a great figure to use in my 2000X Customs because his gauntlets are silver, and that's usually pretty close to what a lot of 2000X figures have is silver gauntlets of some sort. Now, um, kind of an expensive figure to use just to customize, but um, he is the right skin color, and... Uh, he does have the silver gauntlets, really quick way to do it. They don't have to worry about changing the gauntlets out. Another figure to use for the body is uh, Hero. Now Hero, again, um, expensive figure, not as much as King Grayskull. And uh, his gauntlets are very similar in coloring to the Ice Armor He-Man. So I've actually used his gauntlets before to make Ice Armor He-Man. That way if you want to stay with the uh, um, classic... Um, look you can use these gauntlets here to simulate the 2000x ice armor he-man now the bad part is you can't actually use his full body because his stomach and upper part of his body is painted gold so when you take his armor off um you won't have a bare belly you'll have like a gold tank top which maybe you do want that so um you can only use so much of this figure you may also want to use the calves and i'll talk about that in a little bit if you go that route now, if you, if you do have a, a, a hero figure you want to uh, use for your custom, there's a lot of pieces on this figure that are great for other parts. You can use the head to create um, hero before he changes the hero. 
This uh, midsection always works great for other figures. The boots are very coveted as well because they are 2000X style um, for a lot of different figures. You've seen me use them before for my 2000X um, Skeletor. It would also work really great for a 2000X Stinkor too. So if you do decide to go that route, at least his parts won't be wasted. So the next thing is the boots. What boots do you use? Now you could carefully cut these boots off and sand them down to get them off. You know what? I didn't finish the gauntlets. Hold on. So, or back to the gauntlets, or you could use the gauntlets that come with this figure as well. You could take and slice the arm, and I'll show you guys that, drill out the center of it, and then you have to slide them on to a figure like Ular that already has bare wrists. Now, if you use Ular as your base, um, the problem is his uh, ankles and his calves, they don't split in the middle where the boot should go. So now you have to either cut them with the Dremel tool, which is not a good idea, or you have to use somebody else's calves. Now I found a really cheap solution for finding those bottom legs is Molar. Molar, molar skin color is very close and it works pretty good for uh, using that and molars do go for less money and as a bonus you'll get an extra Skeletor with a missing tooth which you can plug the tooth if you want to with um, some type of uh, putty or sculpty or epoxy mix and then paint it yellow with a, a black wash to fix that tooth which is kind of fun to do that because look at his eyebrows his eyebrows have a different uh, expression on his face and after you plug the tooth you get to keep that expression that is only on this Skeletor head so that's kind of fun too. And he comes with a Havoc Staff and his swords. So this is a really good way to use those parts. Now the rest of um, Molar is not really for much. You can use them for, you can use the gloves to make some cool custom um, Zodax because he has the right gloves instead of the, the spiked pointed ones. But again, you got to paint those white before you do that. All right, so uh, the boots. A couple ways you can go with the boots. One is you could carefully cut these off and then drill a hole in them in the top and add some an old ring or something so it will pop on the place in the spot it used to be. But the problem with these boots are is they're not symmetrical and they're not the same and they don't rock on the bottom. This back boot is the is the trouble child. So this back boot goes back a little bit. And so if you put them onto your action figure, you're gonna end up having one leg that must go back all the time. I've tried to heat it up and reshape it. But then uh, it, after time, it just goes back to its weird state. Now, when this figure was made, it was actually made off of a Fisto 2000X that they repurposed the body to create the ice armor. So it has some Fisto parts like this metal piece in front and some other things. So there you go. So I like to use Icer's boots. Now, Icer has fur boots. The problem is that the feet themselves are not fur coated, but that's okay. I can live with that. And sometimes you use a loincloth also if you want to for some cool features and ideas. Now, speaking of loincloths, there's a couple ways you can go for the loincloth. One way is to use the loincloth that comes with Ice Armor He-Man. And this is a great way to do it. I've passed some videos on how to use them. The problem is it has this split right here for the um, cool feature that makes them throw the disc. Watch out. And so because of this, you're going to have this open area right there where you're going to want to either paint it silver or gray underneath on the loincloth you put it on or live with it having that spot there with the color not showing. Now, if you want to go with a style that looks like it's more all classics, um, you can also use like a Zodax um, loincloth. It has the ice armor type looks with the white and gray belt and the gray bottom. Um, I actually like to use this one here, but the bad part is now you left Zodak with no shorts. But that's just something that I like to do um, when I made mine. All right, so those are all the parts. Let me show you one that I've made already. So here's one that I've already made, and you can see the parts that I've used. I used uh, Hero's Gauntlets. I used the regular um, Ice Armor He-Man armor. Um, because it fits tight, I had to add a drop of glue right here to hold it from popping open all the time. I use Zodak shorts, Icer's boots, and I believe the body, it might have been Zodak's, nope, because there's no fur on his chest. I'm not sure whose body I ended up using, but you can see it's lighter color than Ular's, so it was probably a lighter, 
human figure. You know what? It might have even been Molar, the whole entire body. You know what I think it was? I think I painted it brown afterwards on the bottom to hide the Molar. That doesn't make sense. I would have painted it gray. I'm not sure whose body I used on this. Sorry, you guys. But whoever's body I used, it worked great. It might have been King Grayskulls. You know what? I think... Yep. I actually used uh, King Grayskull's body for this originally, and then I swapped out the gauntlets because I got tired of the silver and went with the hero gauntlets. So this is a King Gray Skull. That's why it's lighter in color. And that's why he has the brown underneath for the loincloth. All right, so. And of course I used the, the head from the two-pack. The sword from the two-pack. Now the battle axe. Um, I used to always use the blue battle axe from the weapons pack, but then uh, I started using the gray battle axe. It's the small standard one for the standard He-Man or King Grayskull. But then I decided to make my own. And so I actually designed this on my 3D program. I, it's a little different than the regular axe. You can see the handles are different on it. And some other things are different as well. And so uh, I printed it in clear. And after I printed it in clear, then I went and put some blue and some white on it. And a little bit of a uh, um, darker blue to try to give it some, some shading. And uh, made myself an ice axe. That works pretty good. Only because this is the one I wanted to keep with as much classics as possible. The only part that's not classics on this figure is the armor. So everything else is from some classic figure except for that. Now this new figure I'm making today, I'm going to use a whole lot more parts from him. My plan is to use the loincloth, the armor, the gauntlets. I haven't decided whose hands I'm going to use. I might use his hands. Um, actually it won't be his, it will be his. But you guys get the idea. And uh, that way then he can hold the spear easier. So I'm not sure which way I'm going to go, but I have used those hands before. And then it also gives you this little piece here. Now I want you to notice on this side, it's just that bluish gray, more gray than blue. And on this side, it's cool and silver and has all, all, the, con all the details. I think they did this for a couple reasons. One, when you take this off and on, you would have scratched that paint up a lot. And two, you can't see it once this is on, so it's not that big of a deal to have it colored. But since mine's not going to have that on all the time, I want them to match. And so either you have to get two arms that are unpainted or two arms that are painted. Now, I happen to have an extra left arm that I have, I have acquired. And so I'll be using this left arm here. Um, it's like it has a little damage on it. Bummer. Um, I'll be using this left arm here to make two of these same gauntlets. And I'll just flip it over on this side just like that. Um, it's not exactly correct, but it will work really good. So, there we go. There is my plans for this classic ski man. And I'm not going to use these boots. I might show you what they look like. I may not. I'm not sure. Oh, keeps getting blurry. Sorry, you guys. Oop, there we go. But I'll probably go with Icer's boots. Now, there is somebody online. They're asking me for Icer parts. So, soon, I will have some Icer parts for you. I'm going to steal the boots and the loincloth and the spike and the rest I'll have for you if you need them. All right, you guys, I will go ahead and get to work on this and I'll show you some in work videos as we go. All right, so here we are, part two. So first thing, let's get this figure open so we can use them. Now, this figure, like I said, is really cool. Here's the back of the box. You guys take a look at what he has. It shows the Ice Armor He-Man. And uh, show some other figures in the line. There's the SKU number in case you want to look it up on eBay or something. And it shows his uh, weird little shield that shoots the discs that never really work too well. See, there it goes. Ching! And I, I can never get it to function very well. But anyway, this is not about that. This is about making that cool custom Ice Armor He-Man for classic. Of course, we always have our awesome sticker. And there he is. Now, one thing I loved about these packages was this right here. This was so cool in that it had some parts that were solid and not see-through and other parts that were see-through. I just love the way they did that. You can see how they have the, the white backing on the non-see-through stuff. And it just made such a cool aesthetic of the see-throughness and the non-see-throughness. And... I don't know, it just looks really cool. Anyway, let me set that aside. And let's get him out of the package here. So we have our spear. 
the ice spear of destiny. And we have the shield that I got too many of these I'm not going to ever use. And then we have ooh, the ice armor he man himself. So for this figure, I'm going to use the armor. So let's take that off. Oh, it's all nice and tight. I wonder if it's glued. Mm. Wow, this one actually is glued. That is unusual. I wonder if it's just from, from it sitting in the package for so many years. Okay, so because of that, let's spend a little more effort to get this off carefully. Over his head. And I'm going to leave it glued for the new figure instead of having to re-glue it later. So, save myself some time. Come on, over your chin, buddy. There we go. Gonna use that. Now, to get the loincloth off, this is the fun part. She has snapped the figure in half. You ready? Are you ready for this? Do, 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 do. Ugh. Oh. Ah. And then you carefully pull this off so you don't damage it. on tight too. I think this guy used more glue than most people. So now with this I'm going to take and cut this around very carefully and then sand it with my Dremel tool. Now I'm still debating on the boots. Again you can see when his legs are straight that boots just awkwardly awkwardly weird sitting and I still need his cuffs. So let's move into the other room and uh, let's heat this guy up and take his cuffs off him. I went and got the boy like this really cool scissors my son gave me a few years ago. And why I like these is it has that curve right there. So I can stick he -Man's arm in there and slice it off right where it needs to be. So my water's boiling pretty hard. Let me stick it in this cup right here. Woo! Hot, hot, hot. Hot, 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 hot. All right, just stick his arms in there. Boop. There we go. There he is sitting in the water. Now, usually I'm gonna sit for about a minute in there, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll pause the video. All right, it's been about a minute. Let me go ahead and set this camera back up so you guys can watch. There we go. Now when you pull him out, you wanna make sure he's rubbery and the parts are movable. If they are, then it's soft enough. Pull his hands off. You might use these later on. And now to cut off his arms right here. So this is really easy to mess up, so be careful. Is you want to make sure when you cut this, you leave this part on there. Now I've gotten pretty close before in the past where I've cut part of that off and I've been kind of ticked with myself. So open it wide enough. And you can sand off the excess later. So it's okay to be wider than not. And you can see there how I got that right above the arm spot and then just slice it right off. Now for the other side, and technically I don't need this size, I'm gonna use the other arm. You know what? I'm not even gonna cut it off. But you guys get the idea. Now, if you are gonna use one of each one, I, I would suggest taking and painting this one to match. And now, we have to sand this out of here. It's not hollow, you have to actually sand it yourself. You sand it down, then use a Dremel tool and sand in, keeping it cool. If it gets hot, you'll ruin the paint on this. So keep it cool while you do it.
go ahead and open a visor just to steal his boots. All right, so now I am ready to assemble. So let's go ahead and pour our hot water in here. Let's get our figure pulled apart. So here's my Ular. And I'm gonna pull his legs off, is the plan. So I have him sitting in the hot water. And again, this takes about a minute for it to heat up. So I'm gonna put you guys on pause. All right, I had you guys pause. I also put Icer in a cup of hot water too to get his boots going. Let's see if this is warm enough to pull it apart yet. Now what we're looking for is good separation on the leg right here. So I'm going to take and pull this a little bit and see if I can pop this out without causing any extra damage to the figure. <sighs> hey, I got it off. Cool. Let's try this one too. It should. It's the same temperature and the same uh, material, but let's... A little bit tougher, there we go. Now let's try Ular's boots. Not quite. Now I'm just gonna stick his boots right on these legs that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna set these aside so I don't mix them up. Now one thing I may find is that these may fit differently and I may have to take it apart at the knee for it to work. So I'll see how those fit. But in the meanwhile, it is time to prepare this figure for the loincloth and to get his hands removed. So let's stick them back in the hot water. Let's uh, put the loincloth in there. And I decided to go with Ular's loincloth on the bottom. Let's see if these are soft enough yet. It's getting close. Alright, so to get this on, you just take and pull it over his shorts, just like a big old belt. Let me get my light on here so you guys can see what I'm doing. There we go. So I just pull these up and over. Science that helps to use a screwdriver to help orientate these. These ones are a little bigger than the normal 2000X shorts, so it's not too bad as to put them on your hands. As I mentioned before, it reminds me of dressing my daughter's Polly Pockets for her. They had rubber clothes and signs they fit kind of tight. Well, this is the same kind of uh, deal. And it's funny because that was Mattel that used to make those, and this is made by Mattel as well. So I'm sure the rubber is the same kind of rubber they used to use for those figures. All right. There we go. And see, there's that unsightly gap I was telling you about. You're just stuck with it. There's no way around it. Um, like I said, you could use a, a gray loincloth underneath there or paint that spot silver, and it's not quite as bad then, but you'll just always have that gap. Usually his arm's blocking it, and then also this is right in the way, so from a frontal view, you can't see it very often. All right, so let's get his hands off. Let's check those boots. Ugh. Those are just sticking pretty bad in there. It should be hot enough because his knees are ready to pop apart. There we go. There's one. Ugh. Wow, that is really hot, but it's still not wanting to get rid of this, there's two. So now when you line this up, look for the muscle on the inside of the leg and look for the curvature of the foot on the inside before you put it together. So there we go, the curvature should match that muscle. Urgh. That is really tight. I'm gonna put these back in the hot water for a while. It's probably because they're thicker than I'm used to, so it's probably why they're taking so long. All right, let's pull off his hands. 
stick in the wrist cuffs. And I'm actually going to change this water. Now make sure you always plug your sink because you don't want to accidentally pour parts down the drain and end up uh, losing some parts. So always control when water goes in and out of there. Now for this to work, they have to be super, super hot. So it does take a little bit of effort to make sure it stays super hot when you're doing this. Now since they're both the exact same side, they're both left sides, it doesn't matter which one I stick on which. So I'm just going to grab one out of there. And the trick to these is to make sure that you line up this with the elbow. So let's just put that on there. <sighs> A little more heat. While we're waiting for those, let's check the feet. Let's see if we can get the boots on. Inside muscle, inside curve. That is definitely a tight fit. Inside muscle, inside curve. Ugh. All right, now before I put those legs on, I know these legs are gonna eventually start getting really loose. I'm just gonna go ahead and do some uh, Stuff right now to fix that from happening. I'm gonna add these uh, O-rings on, and it's easier to do when the legs are off. So you take your O-rings, you stretch them out, and you can go to he-bro.com, he-bro.com to find out the size O-rings I use. Scroll down about halfway down the page, and I have a table that shows you all the O-ring sizes for most of my repairs. a video on how to do this yourself step by step on how to make the legs tighter and I just find it's just good to do it because you know they're gonna get loose as time goes on so whenever you have your legs off you just go ahead and put the o-ring on and do it now preventative maintenance right Is just being a stinker today. Usually it's not this difficult to get them on. There we go. And just slide them up and over. They just fall right into the gap where you need them. I'm moving the leg back and forth a little bit. There we go. Now the other one. If you don't stretch them first like this, they'll just snap on you. Just like a balloon before you blow it up. You can do some stretches on it. That one works way better. Now when you do this, make sure the figure's cold. Don't put them on while it's super hot, otherwise it will uh, stretch the legs out and actually ruin them. So make sure that that part's actually cold before you put it on. All right, let's go ahead and try those wrist cuffs again. Let me 
Again, line up the elbow with the point on there. doing is I'm pushing it against the countertop to try to get it flush on this side here. It's so close. It's almost flush now. Heating up some more water to try to help with this. All right, and I finally heard it push into place. Now, let's add his hand. I have choices here. I can go with the original 2000X hands, which I think I'm gonna do, or I could stick on his uh, Ular's hands, and I think I'm going this route. It looks pretty cool. That way he'll be able to hold the spear later. Now the skin tone does not match exactly, but because we got a, a part of a twin that's kind of large, most people won't notice that the skin tone changes from the hand to the arms. But I'll show you what I mean in a moment. This one went on a lot easier. Let's see which one's better. Oops, wrong legs. There we go. Now I can hold the spear easy. Let's get his armor on. Remember his armor is already pre-glued, so I don't want to mess that up. Funny, it was actually easier getting it on him than it was to get it off the other one, even though he's a bigger figure. Let's drop his head in there. Let's see if these are done. Not quite. Let's keep some more water just in case I need it. Now the head does not take long at all for it to become pliable enough because the hole's large in it. So let's go ahead and get that head out of there. There we go. These legs might not work. I may have to, uh, oh, hey, they do work. Cool. Those boots just are not sitting comfortably in there. All right. Now he's kind of rubbery, so I want to wait and give it some time for him to kind of uh, cool down a little bit. Put his loincloth in place. And there he is so far. We'll go back to the other room and finish him up. All right, I'm back in the room, and uh, you can see here he is complete. And because I used the original hands, I can now put the giant ice spear in his hand, which is kind of cool. And then I can use the um, 2000X sword if I want to, or the 2000X 
uh, battle axe because it's 2000 X size hands. Now, the battle axe, if you're really good at doing stuff, you could actually take and uh, cast this in light blue. I know my friend Brian's planning on doing that. Um, I took the lazy way out. I just took and painted one today with uh, some different blues and, and white hues to kind of make it kind of an ice look. Um, I didn't actually cast it, but you can see I kind of put like a frost kind of look even on the front of it too. So that way then it can kind of have that cool ice, kind of like it's a frozen battle axe kind of look. And because it was made for the battle axe, there it goes in his back. And of course you can use the 2000 X shield with him too, if you want. Of course you can't put this, uh, spear in the other hand. If you want, you could take and put the same kind of blue shading on here as too, as well. I thought things frozen up too. Just some thoughts. All right. So there he is. He is complete. Let's compare him next to my other one. And you can see, uh, I think the shield out of his hand. Uh, the things that make this one unique and different is of course the arm bands. I still have some paint touch up to do on it though. And, uh, the loincloth and the ax. I guess, oh, the hands too. All right, so there you go. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. And uh, thanks for watching, you guys. Oh, hey, one last thing is I might swap out the loincloth with this. This is a loincloth from that giant creature. It's kind of like Beast Man. And I was thinking if I put this underneath this instead of the brown one, then the white would stick past a little bit and it might look kind of cool. So when you see pictures of him on Facebook, um, he may have this under there instead of the brown one. I think that just might be way cooler. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think. I may put a light gray wash on it so it matches these boots a little bit. Or I may just leave it the way it is. But I think I'm going to swap this out for this one. I think it'll look way cooler. And uh, so that's all I got. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next video. And remember, I got that cool video I'm working on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release it probably in about seven weeks. So... I'll talk to you guys later. Bye now. Oh, and for those that are mothers, happy Mother's Day. Bye. All right, so I just came back and swapped out the loincloth and I put the white one on. I found out the long goes in the front, not the back. So that was a little disappointing, but um, I think it looks okay. I never noticed before, but the back doesn't have any uh, um, detail on it really compared to the front where it has the white kind of detailing on it. So there he is, and this is the guy I stole the loincloth from. Um, I just happened to get one one time from somebody who was selling it, so I didn't have to destroy a figure for it. But I think it works okay. I mean, it's not spectacular, but it works okay. So there you go. There he is, and there's, there's a spot where the, the break is in the middle there. And I could probably throw some gray paint on there. I'm really debating. And uh, ta-da, he's done. And... That's it, you guys. One could be my fake rice armor. Huh. I showed it to my wife and she's like, hmm, interesting. And I knew that meant she didn't like it. So I went ahead and put some gray paint on it and kind of did a wash on it. And then I also went ahead and did a solid gray paint um, on the, the gap right there. So you can kind of see it fills it in, not quite so obvious. And there we go. There's my completed ice armor He-Man with a little bit extra loincloth than normal and a uh, cool new ice axe that I painted to go along with it. And his hand can hold his spear. So there we go. That is my final, finally done Ice Armor He-Man. Oh, let me grab his 2000X sword, and stick it in his hand. There we go. Oh, also I did touch up paints on all the spots that were bare. So you can see now they've all been fixed and painted and ready to go. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, and I will see you next video. Hey, there's the other legs. Uh, why won't you stand? Stand, He-Man, stand. All right, you guys, take care. Bye now. If you found enjoyment, like, subscribe.